Yellowstone warning. Forget the supervolcano, this is Yellowstone's greatest geological threat. Tyler Durden, Zero Hedge Reports. Authored by Catherine Lackey of USA Today. While the potential eruption of the supervolcano that lies beneath this iconic park may garner more alarming headlines, the more likely hazard is a major earthquake. While concerns about a potential eruption of the supervolcano beneath this park are alarming, the likely hazard in the coming decades is the large earthquake. Quote, the biggest concern we have for Yellowstone is not with the volcano, it's with earthquakes, said Michael Poland, scientist in charge of Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, a consortium of eight organizations led by the U.S. Geological Survey. This is an un uh, underappreciated hazard in the Yellowstone area. There can be, and there will be in the future, magnitude seven earthquakes. On average, Yellowstone experiences one and a half to two and a half thousand earthquakes every year, most of them so small you can't feel them. But large quakes can be felt and have occurred in the not too distant past. On August 17, 1959, a magnitude 7.3 earthquake rocked the park, killing 28 people when a landslide roared through a campground. More than 800 million tons of rock fell, blocking a river and forming a lake aptly named, named Earthquake Lake that remains today. At the time, the quake was the second largest in the lower 48 states in that century. It remains the largest historical earthquake in the Intermountain West. Intermountain West is the region between the Rocky Mountains to the east and the Cascade Range in Sierra Nevada to the west. Compared with even a minor eruption of Yellowstone supervolcano, the threat of an earthquake on a similar scale happened again, and it's more likely. Quote, that's something that happens on a human life scale, end quote, Poland said. But unlike a volcano, large earthquakes don't show warning signs. And he added, we can say where they are likely to occur, but we can't say when. The hazards posed by large quake today would be greater than what happened nearly 60 years ago due to a higher influx of visitors, especially in the summer. More than 4 million people visit Yellowstone every year with peak visitations in July and August. Quote, it would be a lot worse today with more people in the area, end quote, said Jamie Farrell, a geologist professor at the University of Utah. Yellowstone sits in a rural area with few roads. If one road goes out, it creates a huge detour, Farrell points out. If two roads become impassable, sometimes you can't even get there by car. He said the good thing is that Yellowstone is one of the best seismically monitored regions in the world. More than 40 seismic stations with the University of Utah continuing record record the Earth's movement in and around the Yellowstone region and report back to the National Park Service. Quote, we can't predict them, but by looking at past data, these earthquakes tend to cluster in areas. Given what's happened in the past, we can give a probability of having an earthquake over the next X amount of time, Farrell said. Minor earthquakes rattle a park pretty much every single day, but visitors won't know it. The quakes are so small, they're picked up only by seismographs. Scientists watch those quake swarms diligently, keeping a close eye on the timing, location, and depth. Quote, we're all aware there is a potential, because it's a dynamic system, that we might want to actually move people away from the area or close close up an area, Jeff Hungerfold, the park geologist, says. In addition to a major quake causing landslides and damaging or collapsing buildings and bridges, there's another hazard. It could trigger a hydrothermal explosion, a mixture of hot water, mud, and rocks that could injure people if that happens to be nearby. As for uh, the large earthquake triggered, triggering volcanic, uh, volcanic eruption, while that is possible, a lot of things shouldn't be, uh, would need to be in play. The 1959 quake, for example, didn't trigger a volcanic eruption. In order for a large earthquake to trigger a volcanic eruption, you probably already need to have an eruption almost ready to happen, Farrell said. 
The Yellowstone system has two main contributors to its earthquakes. The volcanic system, which puts stress on the crust, and the tectonic system, which is represented here by an area of active stretching of the crust from east to the west. The earthquakes also play an important role in keeping, uh, helping keep the geysers like Old Faithful running and rumbling. Quote, we need this simplicity to keep these beautiful features alive because they clean the throat of many of our geysers and pools, Hungerford said. Regardless, Farrell said visitors should not be on high alert for a geolo geological event of any sort. He said we like to talk about these big, grandiose things happening, like big earthquakes or large volcanic eruptions, but those are highly unlikely events, he said. You are in much more danger driving to Yellowstone than you would be by any of these things happening while you're there. 